Monroe's mother had always been much better at starting things than finishing them. When she died, she left behind over 300 canvases, not one of them finished, along with Monroe, who felt pretty unfinished himself. The orphanage allowed him to keep only one painting, and so he chose the unfinished swan that had always been his mother's favorite. But that night, he woke up to find the swan had disappeared. So he took his mother's silver paintbrush and followed the footprints into a little door he hadn't seen before.
The king was young, arrogant, and amazingly talented. He was convinced no color existed that was good enough for his garden, so he left it white. While he pondered how to create some new colors, his kingdom began attracting settlers, and soon he found himself with bigger problems. The king's new subjects were tired of white. They were tired of tripping, of banging their shins, of misplacing their homes. So they started painting everything, ruining the king's spotless design. In response, the king outlawed all non-magical brushes and pledged to spend the next month painting shadows for his kingdom. was designed to be beautiful 
and it was. It was not designed to be practical, and it wasn't. Whole families got lost for weeks at a time, mail took months to arrive, and many worried a labyrinth of this size was bound to attract dragons. Eventually, the complaints grew so loud, even the king couldn't ignore them. The king was so frustrated with the messy, demanding people of his kingdom that he decided to start over. One morning he painted a boat and set off to find the perfect spot. He told himself he'd come back someday to finish what he had started, but of course. For the first time in weeks, Monroe felt good. He felt even better when the wind pushed him close enough to reach the swan. He was feeling so good, in fact, that he forgot all about his fear of heights. But when the swan wriggled free and Monroe fell over the side, he remembered almost immediately. That might have been the end of Monroe, if this were a shorter story, but it isn't, which is why Monroe's troubles were just beginning. Monroe scrambled out of the water and found himself in a massive city with no sign of the swan or anyone else. Well, except someone's enormous pair of feet. These were attached to a giant who could have been a big help in catching the swan, but unfortunately, here was the laziest giant who had ever lived, and it was his day off. Having celebrated in his usual way, he was now sleeping it off and quite unable to hear Monroe yelling. While he was looking for a way to wake the giant, Monroe noticed something even better, a floating ship. Sometimes the giant wondered about where all the people in the city had gone. Mostly he worried they might come back and ask him to clean their gutters or put out their fires. But they never did, and that was why the giant, who was the laziest that had ever lived, was also the happiest. Before he discovered painting, the king was a potter. He loved the simplicity of a well-spun pot. So when his subjects complained that his new city was too austere and that there was nowhere to relieve themselves, the king ignored them. But when they started relieving themselves in his pots, the king hastily built them a sewer system. Yeah.
filled up with people, the streets filled up with garbage. In a fury, the king painted over the roads with a canal, which swept away the trash, along with some of the slower children. But the water brought something else, a horde of vines which began covering the city. Thank you. 
his nicely trimmed hedge maze, the vines refused to stay where the king wanted them. He ordered his subjects to pull up every vine they saw. But the people were getting tired of the king's endless decrees. So they secretly began watering the vines whenever the king wasn't looking.
hated the sea, and all because of his very first castle. It was the only one he had ever come close to finishing, and it took him a single day. But then the tide came in and washed it all away. He vowed that someday he'd build a kingdom that would last forever.
The vines were slowly burying the king and his city. No matter what he tried, the king couldn't stop them. So he decided to create something that could. He mixed in paint thinner, malice and snot, and soon had the outlines of a pretty horrible creature. But it wasn't until the thing began to coil its tentacles and snap its jaws that the king understood what he had made. And for the first time in his life, the king was afraid. finished, the creature had no trouble swallowing up all the king's soldiers, half his zoo, and three peppermint gazebos. It was only with the help of his pet hippo and the giant that the king was able to force it into the sea. And though the water remained black for years after, the creature was never seen again on shore.
Within a short time, the king's subjects had all moved away, except the giant, who was quite loyal and also very lazy. Monroe waved goodbye to the giant and set sail. But no matter how fast he went, the swan was always just out of reach. And not for the first time that day, Monroe suspected he was being led somewhere. Then they flew into a cloud and everything went black. Monroe sailed on in darkness following the swan's voice, but he never saw a thing. Not the stars, not the swan, and certainly not the tree he got stuck in. When the clouds lifted, the swan was gone, leaving Monroe alone in the middle of an immense forest. Since there was nothing else to be done, he jumped.
Tired of creating perfect kingdoms only to attract less than perfect subjects, he decided he'd have to leave a legacy the old-fashioned way, with a family. So he began to build one, starting with a house. much luck with people, so instead of trying to find a wife, he painted one. When she opened her eyes, the king was astonished. He had created a female version of himself. The king was in love.
Every day the king painted a new room for the house, and every day he abandoned it as not good enough for his queen. While he slept, the queen spent her nights painting creatures of the forest, though she never finished a single one. Five months went by before the king noticed she was pregnant. Thank you. 
Before the queen was to give birth, she left. All she took was a single unfinished painting. When the king woke, he found no explanation, and he never did. paint a thing. Then he had a vision, a colossal monument of himself that would be his legacy for the ages. But he hadn't even finished painting the scale model, which was over 100 feet tall itself, when his powers began to fail. The king never finished another painting. Then one night he went to sleep and couldn't even finish his own dream, and he's been trapped inside it ever since. Huh! <laughs> 
As Monroe stood there trying to think of something to say, the statue shut and the hatch slammed shut. And now there was no more need for talking. The king was awake. Ah, it's you, the boy from my dream. What a strange dream it was. My life's work was being destroyed, and all I could do was watch. Come, sit here by the fire. It all began right there, in the house I grew up in. I heard a heavy knocking at the door, just like on the night I left. the door, but there was nothing there, just white space. But when I got outside, disaster. Some miscreant had painted everything. My garden was ruined. And then my statue spoke and said, Help me! Some little hooligan is running around splattering everything in the garden. I think he's headed for the... <laughs> Some of it got in my mouth. Oh, dear. I saw my unfinished labyrinth, abandoned and forgotten. And then the credits appeared. Your dreams have credits? Oh yes, and subtitles. beautiful city, strangled by those disgusting vines. I built it to stand a hundred lifetimes, and instead, it'll be buried in one, a monument for weeds. full of people, like the old days. It smelled like roasted goose. For a moment, I was happy. Then suddenly, I was alone again. The world had become cold and dark. 
I felt my own death rising up around me. Floated past chunks of the house I built, or, or started building. Scarcely ten years later, and the whole thing was in ruins. My works were meant to last forever, but most of them will be gone before I am. I was at a funeral. My own, as it turned out. No one was there except you. I saw my monument. My last hope of leaving something that would live on after me. And I began to walk towards it. And with each step I took, I got larger. I just kept growing and growing like a teenager. With a gentle push, my money crumbled and sank. I saw my life's work laid out in front of me. Soon it would crumble into dust, or be painted over by someone who would come after me, the same way I painted over what was here before me. When the universe ended, I knew that everything I'd made was over. And as I sat there, looking out into the darkness, I thought back on all the things I'd built and left unfinished. I realized something. I wasn't sad that it was all gone. I had fun making all that stuff. I would have done it anyway. And then, somehow I knew that when I woke up, all my work really would be destroyed. And that's when you showed up. I don't know how you got here, but I'm glad to see you. I have something for you. This brush isn't mine anymore. My work is over. It belongs to you now. I hope it makes you happy and that someday they will say, he is a better man than his father. That door will take you anywhere you want to go, but leave quickly, child. None of this will last for long. And that night, even though he was very tired, Monroe did something that would have made his mother very happy. He painted. <laughs> 